Hello and welcome to this presentation from Micro Epsilon. Today I'll be introducing you to one of our most simple to use, yet highly stable, robust and one of the most accurate measurement sensor technologies based on the capacitive principle. My name is Glenn Wedgebrow and I'm the Business Development Manager for Micro Epsilon here in the UK. In today's presentation on capacitive displacement sensors, I'll be covering the measuring principle the key factors you need to know when using them and the typical applications where the technology has been used. The principle of capacitive displacement measurement is based on how an ideal plate type capacitor operates. The two plate electrodes, A, are represented by the sensor and the opposing measuring object. If a constant alternating current flows through the sensor capacitor, the amplitude of the alternating voltage on the sensor is proportional to the distance between the capacitor electrodes. The alternating current is demodulated and output as an analog signal. A normal capacitive sensor is comprised of a measuring electrode and ground. The formed field is somewhat erratic leading to increased noise and lower performance. Micro epsilon sensors use a completely triaxial sensor design which is unique for capacitive sensors. The guard ring electrode, the grounding and the measurement electrode are located on the front edge of the sensor. The addition of the guard ring electrode ensures a homogeneous or linear measuring field is formed and this is why precise measurements can be achieved with highest signal stability. The sensor cable, which is extremely low noise, enables an impermeable electrical shield. Due to the triaxial design, the sensors are insensitive to magnetic interference fields and can be mounted flush in conductive materials. The sensors can also come into contact with each other in the case of multi-channel measurements. Capacitive displacement sensors can be used with any surface type regardless of optical target properties such as lustre, roughness or reflection. In general, any target that is conductive can be measured with the capacitance principle. That includes metals, graphite, silicon, carbon fibre, even water. The electrons are flowing across the gap between the sensor and the conductive target. If your target is non-conductive, i.e. an insulator, such as plastics, ceramics, glass and oil, then it is still possible to measure with certain conditions as the electrons are now passing from the guard electrode to the sensor ground. In between the metals and the insulators, there is a large range of semiconductors. Most semiconductors can be measured very well as electrical conductors. The requirement is that the capacitive part of the total impedance is still significantly larger, greater than 10 times that of the ohmic part. This is almost always the case for silicon wafers, irrespective of the endowment. Nevertheless, semiconductors with poor conductivity, for example gallium arsenide, can also be measured as conductors under certain circumstances, and you should talk to us if you have this requirement. The controller, cable and sensor are a complete measurement channel. Sensor heads and measurement ranges can be swapped without further calibration provided that the overall channel electrical characteristics are not changed. This is what we mean by hot swap. A change in cable length changes the overall capacitance and needs a different demodulator in the controller. The most important advantages of capacitive technology are measurements can be made on both electrical conductors or metals regardless if they are ferrous or not and insulators which is very different to our eddy current sensors. We can achieve resolution down to the sub nanometer range. The triax sensor design ensures highest precision and signal stability. The triax design also means that they have high immunity to interference from a magnetic field. They are suitable for use in vacuum and clean rooms and they are highly precise 
even at extreme temperatures. MicroEpsilon has the world's largest variety of combinations of sensors, cables and controllers. State-of-the-art modular controller technology is also available with many digital interfaces. Capacitive sensors from MicroEpsilon have proven themselves in many different applications over decades. More than 25 standard sensors with measuring ranges from 50 micron to 10 millimeter cover numerous fields of application. These sensor models are available as cylindrical versions with connector as well as with integrated cable as a flat sensor and in PCB designs. Different materials and manufacturing technologies are used as well as the standard stainless steel stroke invar design, sensors made from titanium are also available. Cylindrical capacitive sensors may be mounted freestanding or flush. During installation, take care that the polished sensor front face is not scratched. In the event that the sensor might be damaged by moving parts, recessed installation is also possible. However, the sensors must not be recessed too deep into conductive materials as laterally emanating field lines might shorten with the surrounding material. The rule of thumb, max permissible recession, is half of the measurement range. When installing cylindrical sensors, there are two methods suggested. Radial spot clamping with grub screws. This simple type of fixture is only recommended for installation locations that are free of impact or vibration. The grub screw must be made of plastic so that it cannot damage or deform the sensor housing. The second is clamping around the circumference. This sensor mounting option offers maximum reliability because the sensor is clamped around its cylindrical housing. It's absolutely necessary in difficult installation environments, for example on machines and production plants. Flat sensors are mounted by means of a threaded or through hole for M2 screws and the sensors can be bolted from the top or below. Capacitive displacement sensors from Micro Epsilon have a measuring range from 0.05 mm to 10 mm. The controller enables the possibility to double the measurement range in such a way that a nominal measurement range up to 20 mm is available. However, the sensor dimensions increase with larger measuring ranges. Unlike point-shaped measuring principles, capacitive displacement sensors record the average distance of the active measuring area. If sensor or target are moved in the x and y direction, the capacitive sensor outputs the average distance recorded across the entire measuring area. As the measuring principle operates without penetration of the fields in the target, even the thinnest targets, for example 10 micron electrically conductive paint, can be measured. The capacitive measuring process operates with currents in the microampere range. This means even the smallest electrical charges are sufficient to make measurements possible. Even very thin metallic objects can guarantee the charge carrier displacement. A target thickness of a few micrometers is sufficient here. When the centre of gravity of the target is in the centre under the capacitive sensor and when the field lines enclose the target, the average distance between sensor and target is taken into account in the measurement. If the target is offset from the sensor centre and when the target edge is within the measuring field, the measured value will be incorrect. However, if the target is narrow but long and positioned along the centre axis of the sensor, then it is possible to make reliable measurements. The influence of the target width on the measurement signal is shown using the example of a CSO5 sensor. Normally we recommend a target surface diameter of 7mm for this sensor. The smaller the distance between sensor and target, the narrower the target can be. In the example, a centrally placed target with a width of 5mm is sufficient to achieve a stable signal in the centre of the measuring range. This proves that the field does not spread beyond the central area. In practice, it is often necessary to measure curved surfaces. 
A classic example is shaft runout measurements, where a cylindrical target is measured. Compared to a flat target, there are either more or less significant measured value deviations depending on the bending radius. This is caused by various effects, for example concentration of the field lines at the highest point, or a capacity increase due to a larger measuring spot. In reality, it can be assumed that the bending radius results in a virtual zero point, i.e. the sensor value zero can no longer be achieved. Due to the integrating function of the capacitive sensor over the measuring surface, the virtual average measuring plane lies behind the surface line. In these cases, where we don't have an ideal target geometry, or you want to achieve an absolute reading, then the DT6200 or DT6500 series controllers also allow for up to 2, 3, 5 or 10 point linearization to be stored in the controller. This process allows you to characterize the sensor to the specific target geometry. In order to achieve high accuracies, the conductive target must be grounded. Controllers from Micro Epsilon have a grounding connection which is used to ground the target. Grounding allows for a smooth flow of electrons to pass from one electrode to the other. Without grounding, the electrons may return via the sensor ground, so it is essentially floating, leading to increased noise in the readings. When operating two capacitive systems synchronously, target grounding is not required. With extremely large machines, target grounding can, under certain circumstances, also be omitted as the load can run off via the metal parts. There are four ways to measure with the capacitive sensors. Mode 1, measuring the distance from electrical conductors, e.g. metal. Most of the measurement tasks for capacitive displacement sensors are distance measurements onto electrically conductive materials. The capacitive system measures the capacity C, which changes proportionally to the distance. The high linearity of the signal is achieved without further electronic circuitry. This particularly applies to measurements against electrically conductive materials. Changes of the conductivity have no influence on linearity or sensitivity. All conductive or semiconductive targets are measured without any loss in measurement performance. Mode 2, measuring the distance from insulators, for example, plastic films. The capacitive system can also measure insulating materials. This linear behaviour for those target groups is achieved by applying special electronic circuitry. The capacity C depends on the distance. In order to achieve high measurement accuracies, the controller must be factory calibrated as the resolution and accuracy are reduced when measuring on insulators. Furthermore, the relative dielectric constant and the target thickness of the measurement object must remain constant in order to enable precise measurements. This mode is only applicable with our DT6500 controller. The third option is two-sided thickness measurement of electrically conductive materials. Two-sided thickness measurement of metals is made possible by installing the sensors opposite each other. Strip thicknesses in the micron range can be measured using this method. Each of the two sensors generates a linear output signal dependent on the sensor surface and target surface. If the distance between both sensors is known, the thickness of the target can be determined easily. Due to the capacitive principle, the measurement is only performed against the surface without penetrating the target. If the measuring points are synchronized, measurements against non-grounded targets are possible. However, resolution will be reduced. Due to this subtraction, the target can move within the measuring gap, which also enables to measure fluttering material. The fourth option is one-sided thickness measurement of insulators, or a relative thickness measurement. Micro epsilon capacitive systems are also used for the linear thickness measurement of insulators. First, the distance between the sensor and the conductive ground electrode must be determined. Subsequently, an insulator with known thickness, for example a plastic film, is moved into the measuring gap. 
Based on this output signal, the reference thickness is determined and stored in the controller. The field lines penetrate the insulator and join with the electrical conductor, the ground electrode. If the thickness of the insulator changes, the capacity is influenced and evaluated in the controller. The distance to the ground electrode must remain constant. Capacitive displacement sensors achieve resolutions in the sub-nanometer range. However, this requires the dielectric or medium between the plates to be constant and therefore for normal measurements a clean and dry measuring gap is needed. In the video we have a target where one side is a plain conductive surface and the other has an insulator coating on it. The dielectric constant of air is 1 and is used in the calibration of a capacitive system. The dielectric of an insulator will be greater than 1 as they impede the flow of electrons and as a result the capacity increases. The presence of dielectric changes during a measurement will affect the precision but conversely it's a great way to use capacitive sensors to measure dielectric changes. So before we get too concerned about the cleanliness of the environment let me show you a little experiment for comparing three different sensor technologies looking at a rotating aluminium cylinder. We will compare a capacitive sensor, eddy current sensor and laser, laser triangulation sensor. A blower at the bottom will be activated to spread alumina oxide particles around the chamber. The graph shows the results of each sensor technology in the clean environment. Capacitive is top right, laser bottom left and eddy current bottom right. On each chart you see the plot of the rotation and then the standard deviation for each overlaid based on 10 measurement cycles or rotations. All sensors make good measurements on the eccentric roller. Any noise is attributed to the mechanics of the motor. Both eddy current and capacitive sensors show less deviation due to the fact they are measuring over a wider area than the laser triangulation sensor. The capacitive standard deviation was plus or minus one micron, eddy current plus or minus two micron, and laser was plus three to minus six micron. Here we have the results when the blower is activated and the dust particles spread over the sensors. There are more vibrations introduced with the blower, but the results show that eddy current shows no real difference in its measurement result, still being plus or minus 2 micron. Whilst capacitive shows a factor 2 change in deviation, but this actually equates still to just plus or minus 2 micron. As you may expect, the laser sensor, being an optical device, shows significant variation in the measurement. Uh, the scaling is 50 micron on the chart. The conclusion being that capacitive sensors can work equally well in dry, dusty environments. In truth, the main influence for capacitive sensors is humidity. The dielectric constant of air is influenced by the humidity. Therefore, Make sure that the measuring gap is as dry as possible, unless of course you're trying to measure oil or water. Capacitive sensors are considered one of the most precise measuring systems, achieving resolutions well below one nanometer. One of the main reasons for this high accuracy is their high temperature stability. Thermally induced conductivity changes of the measuring object have no influence on measurements and the capacitive principle is also reliable even with fluctuations in temperature. This is also reflected by the temperature deviation per degree Celsius. The CS005 sensor model shows a deviation of only half a nanometer per degree C, which is why this measurement technique is also suitable for fields of application where very low or very high temperatures can occur.
Capacitive displacement sensors from Micro Epsilon are not directly influenced by changing magnetic fields. Micro Epsilon offers numerous sensors and sensor cables which are made from non-magnetic materials such as titanium and stainless steel. In addition, their triaxial design is a crucial factor when measuring in interfering fields. Unlike coaxial sensors, the triaxial design of cables and sensor provides increased interference immunity. A coaxial designed sensor and cable will be strongly influenced by changing magnetic and electric fields, which is why the measured results would be incorrect. Capacitive displacement sensors are often used in vacuum and clean room applications where they achieve resolutions in the sub nanometer range. That is partly due to the fact that the measuring gap is free of particles which otherwise might influence the performance. Particularly for vacuum applications, Micro Epsilon offers special sensors and accessories. These vacuum suitable sensors are produced in clean rooms where specially coordinated materials such as titanium and ceramics and low outgassing adhesives are used. This is how sensor and sensor cable undergo a controlled evaluation process to avoid virtual leaks. The CCM cable from Micro Epsilon is a low outgassing cable up to 4.2 meters in length, which is also suitable for ultra high vacuum and extreme ultra vacuum applications but also for measurements in clean rooms. These sensors and cables are particle free to a high degree and used in clean rooms up to the clean room class ISO1. Special vacuum feed through types ensure that the sensor cable can be led outside to the controller. For the different plug models of the micro epsilon cable, suitable feed through types are available. We offer three basic configurations in the capacitive controller portfolio, which I will highlight now. The DT6110 is a self-contained device, essentially plug and play. You select the cable length and sensor and away you go. It gives an analog voltage output equivalent to the measurement range of the sensor, perfect for standard installation applications. The DT6200 series provides a modular concept where up to four channels can be mounted together using the same oscillator for perfect synchronization between the channels. Each demodulator can be used with a different sensor range and can also be individually calibrated for different cable lengths. The DT6230 model allows for synchronization between sets of four channels. The DT6500 is the flagship of the range, offering eight channels and our highest precision. It is also the only system that allows for direct insulator measurement without the need for a conductive backplate. Based on the DT6100 series, the IP controller version is IP68 and sensors come with robust steel braided cables and have a 4 to 20 milliamp output. The DT6114 is a new model for applications where the cable is required to flex during measurement. A built-in pre-amplifier in the sensor head allows for cable lengths up to 15 meters. The MD622 is a mobile two-channel handheld measuring instrument for maintenance use for gap measurements. Measurements are stored on a micro SD card, making evaluation possible in Excel at a later point of time. Capacitive sensors are used in applications where precise measurement results are required. They measure vibrations, oscillation, elongation, displacement, deflection, deformation, thickness and much more. Therefore, capacitive sensors are often applied in terms of quality assurance within a process or as a measuring element for complete closed loops. Due to excellent temperature stability, the capacitive measuring principle is especially suitable for applications in which high temperatures occur and where other sensor technologies such as laser sensors register a strong temperature drift of the signal. So let's now look at some of the applications where capacitive sensors are used. Air gap measurement in large electric motors. 
for very large electric motors, it is important for reasons of cost effectiveness and energy efficiency to know the radial runout of the rotor from the stator inside this motor. Due to imbalance during operation, the rotor may touch the stator, which could cause much damage. This is why sensors are used to measure the distance between the stator and rotor and to monitor the rotor gap whilst the motor is in operation. Changing magnetic fields generated by the electric motor and the restricted installation space are the challenges here. Due to the size of the motor, cable lengths of 8 meters or longer are necessary. In total, one motor normally has 8 sensor channels, but up to 16 channels can also be installed. Capacitive displacement sensors from Micro Epsilon have also proven their worth for measurements of superconductive magnets at minus 270 degrees C. Even radioactive radiation, for example in particle accelerators, does not influence them. The development of electric motors has seen a new requirement for speed measurement to ensure the correct balance of the rotor and stator. Any imbalance would lead to excessive loads and reduce life. In these applications, the materials used are often not suitable for eddy current sensors, so Micro Epsilon developed the new CST6110 capacitive based system, which is able to measure on a wider range of materials. Whether it is electrically conductors or insulators, they are counted from the first detection with no run up necessary and without any impairment of the signal quality. Capacitive sensors can also operate in both very high temperatures and the electromagnetic fields that are present in any motor. Capacitive sensors from Micro Epsilon are used in brake disc measurements in order to obtain information about thickness, temperature induced expansion and deformation during the braking process. These measurements are carried out in test bench and road tests. The challenge is to achieve high measurement accuracies that remain constant despite prevailing fluctuating temperatures. Brake discs can reach temperatures of upwards of 600 degrees C for a short time and then cool down again. In addition, temperature stability, immunity to conductance fluctuations and magnetic fields are decisive factors for selecting capacitive displacement sensors. In this particular task, an additional infrared temperature sensor was used to monitor the edge of the brake disc for temperature feedback. Using several sensors in pairs also enables multi-track thickness measurements across the friction surface. Disc deformations can also be recognised. For brake disc thickness measurements, Micro Epsilon designed an innovative four-channel sensor. In its compact housing, four capacitive sensors detect the measurement values with each operating in standalone mode. A special ceramic substrate protects the sensors from mechanical and thermal loads, providing high temperature stability. In order to enable accurate measurements with simplified mounting, the sensors are available as a mirror inverted arrangement that can be mounted on opposite sides of the brake disc. A car was fully instrumented with 32 channels and driven at 250 km an hour before applying the brakes. In microbiology, cell cultures are used for the analysis of agar plates. When producing this culture medium, liquid agar is filled into plastic petri dishes, where it hardens and forms a gel-like transparent layer. The agar plates should be consistently as high as possible. This is a critical factor for later evaluation of the cell colony cultivated on it. Capacitive displacement sensors from Micro Epsilon inspect the fill level. Using three sensors with a measuring range of 4 mm, the fill level can be determined over three tracks on the Petri dish. Note we are using 2 mm range sensors that have been overranged by the factor 2 to give a 4 mm measurement range. This allows the three sensors to sit side by side to cover the required area of the Petri dish. In film production, inline process monitoring assures constant product quality. Our KSH combination sensor measures the film layer thickness in a non-contact and wear-free way. 
The measurement of film coatings, for example adhesive layers on the self-adhesive film, is based on the capacitive principle. A non-contact capacitive displacement sensor is positioned at a fixed distance from a metal surface, for example the transport roller. The film passes through the measuring gap and as a dielectric changes the capacity of the sensor. With constant film thickness, the output signal only depends on the layer thickness. In addition to the capacitive displacement sensor, an eddy current displacement sensor is also integrated into the sensor housing and arranged in the same measuring axis. Measuring coil and measuring electrodes are a concentric design, i.e. they both measure against the same target surface. The eddy current displacement sensor measures the distance from the transport roller and thus compensates for mechanical changes of the system such as thermal expansion and vibration. The signals of both measuring principles are combined arithmetically. This combination sensor principle assures that the measured thickness value is not influenced by possible distance changes. The internal borehole diameter measuring unit, IDAM control 801, detects the wear in the twin bore or figure eight shaped boreholes of extruder machines by measuring their internal diameter. For this purpose, a measuring probe is pushed into the borehole. An integrated capacitive double sensor measures the actual borehole diameter with the two sensors being directly opposed. In addition, the sensor position in the longitudinal axis of the borehole is measured with a cable length measuring system. The system can be rotated so that up to six tracks around the bore can be measured and compared. This means that every sensor position is assigned a diameter and information about wear is obtained by comparing the diameter values at different dates. Exact thickness measurement of the master die in the process of producing optical storage discs such as Blu-rays and DVDs is crucial. The die thickness must be 297 micron plus or minus 3 micron. The high precision and accuracy of capacitive sensors from micro epsilon are used in this process. Sensors with 2 mm range are mounted directly opposed with the die passed between them. Measuring this accurately on a mirror-like surface and against materials like silicon and compound semiconductors at a reasonable price is generally only possible with capacitive measurement. This principle of thickness measurement has found further applications in a wide range of strip processing lines and have even greater relevance for new industries such as the lithium ion battery production. Capacitive displacement sensors are used for nanometer adjustments of lenses in objectives for wafer exposure. In order to expose the wafer correctly, the light source must be passed through a series of optics or lenses, which often involves bouncing the light around and through the machine in many directions to get to the mask, before ultimately arriving on the wafer. The precise alignment of one optic to the next is crucial to the quality of the final chip being produced on the wafer. Once the optics are correctly aligned, the wafer must also be positioned to allow for the correct exposure of the wafer. The long-term temperature stability of the capacitive sensors, their overall accuracy, and the fact they can be used in ultra-high vacuum are key factors in the use of the sensors for these types of applications. In atomic force microscopes, surfaces are inspected with nanometer resolution. Piezo actuators are drives intended for short displacements, both static and dynamic. High precision displacement sensors ensure that these displacements are measured to the required nanometer and sub-nanometer accuracies. As piezo actuators are used in high precision positioning tasks, the sensors must provide high resolution and stability both in long-term stability and particularly temperature stability. The extreme ambient conditions are a particular challenge. The sensors must provide the same results at 4 Kelvin as they do at room temperature. This is possible using special materials for the sensor and cables which provide stable measurements 
due to their low thermal expansion and the sensors are not influenced by the extreme ambient conditions. These capacitance sensors and the piezo actuators form a position control loop compensating for interferences such as a non-linear actuator curve, temperature expansion, hysteresis and mechanical elasticity. In our final application, Micro Epsilon developed a capacitive measuring system that measures onto the water surface in a container with submicrometer accuracy in order to monitor the vertical movement of the foundation points. Several sensors are connected via pipes in such a way that the height change of the water level has a direct effect on the measuring gap. This technique enables highest precision even in humid environments. This measuring system is for example used in foundations of particle accelerators which are arranged in distances from 6 to 8 meters from each other. The CHLS4 measuring systems are placed at each base and interconnected via a hose system. The CHLS4 capacitive hydrostatic levelling system consists of a two-piece stainless steel housing with a capacitive sensor embedded into the upper section. This measures the distance to the water surface from the top of the, to the bottom. The water surface is in the lower part called the water pot. The upper and the lower part are tightly screwed together to create a sealed system so that the water can only move through the inlet and outlet via the water hoses that are fixed laterally. So in summary, the most important advantages of capacitive technology are measurements on both electrical conductors, all metals regardless if they are ferrous or not, and insulators which is unlike eddy current sensors. We can achieve resolution down to the sub nanometer range. The triax sensor design ensures highest precision and signal stability. And the triax design also means that they have high immunity to interference with magnetic fields. They're suitable for use in vacuum and clean rooms and are highly precise even at extreme temperatures. Micro Epsilon has the world's largest variety of combinations of sensors, cables and controllers and our state-of-the-art modular controller technology has many digital interfaces. The basic limitations with capacitive sensors are the object to be measured must be earthed to ensure high precision, sensor size increases with range and the target must also be larger. There are no sensors available for high pressure applications. And there is a possible influence of non-conductive material between the sensor and the target due to the dielectric properties changing. You can keep up to date with Micro Epsilon by subscribing to this YouTube channel and also make sure you're following us on LinkedIn. If you want regular access to latest news, then you can also subscribe to our UK newsletter for product news and information about products and upcoming events. If you have any questions relating to the topics covered today, or would like further advice on using our sensors, then please make sure to contact us by sending an email to info at micro epsilon .co.uk for the UK and Ireland or info at micro-epsilon.de depending on which part of the world you are in. Thank you. Goodbye.